Do parents have a right to know what their kids are being taught in sex education classes? The government certainly thinks they do. Now, Education Secretary Gillian Keegan has told schools in England that they should provide parents with access to relationships, sex and health curriculum materials. Well, this all centres around, doesn't it really, a concern that in schools at the moment, the child that you have raised and loved and cared for could present themselves and then at some point somebody might tell them that they've been born into the wrong body or they might be taught incredibly graphic things in a sex education class that you as a parent might not be happy with. The fear, presumably, would be that it could indoctrinate them or have some kind of impact negatively on their life. Of course, the flip side to it is that, well, why don't you trust the teachers? Um, isn't this a good thing? Children are maybe growing up quicker than they used to. Uh, and potentially as well, parents could be a damaging influence themselves. I'm joined now by the Director of Family Education Trust. It's Peter Williams. Peter, thank you very, very much. Do parents have a right to know what's being taught in sex ed classes? They certainly do. Parents are the primary educators of their children. It is absolutely their responsibility, their duty and therefore their right to deal with this in their own way, according to their own principles and their own values. And schools are there to enable that, not to stand in loco parentis, not to be parents themselves. What are you, so, what, what, right. what are you so worried about? Well, I would be concerned here that this isn't anywhere near good enough in order to equip parents to not only educate their own children, but also to protect them from unsuitable materials. We know that there have been graphic materials in schools. We know that there's been gender ideology in schools. There's been no uh, accountability in Gillian Keegan, Keegan's statement for that. Mm. We actually did a public inquiry to see how far this has gone, how many children have been affected by it. But irrespective of that, none of what she says today enables parents to stop that material necessarily from occurring. It, for example, doesn't allow parents to, if a school decides to stonewall, by saying, well, we'll show you this material, but only in a meeting in the middle of the day. Yeah, if you're a parent who doesn't have the time or the wherewithal, the self-confidence, to say, actually, hang on, I really insist upon seeing this in a way that is convenient, then you can't do that. Do nor you, can you, in fact, really importantly, nor can you share that material. And that means they can't go to Ofsted and discuss it with them and share it with them. They can't uh, whistleblow to the media. This is really serious. That, and I think that this is not nearly good so, enough. So right now, you're, as you understand it, you're telling me that if I had a child in school and I said, I want to see what you're teaching them in mm. sex education, that school could say no. Or they could show me... They can't and, say no. They right. can stonewall. And actually, again, this is all contingent upon parents being able to see the material potentially, but not being able to share it. Well, again, but not good say, enough. We live in a free country. No one can tell me that I'm not allowed to share anything that I want to share. Well, they can if it's a matter of intellectual property, and they can if they have some kind of punishment to you if you break this agreement. So if it's an NDA, if it's a non-disclosure agreement, then, yeah, there are legal consequences to that. So schools could make someone sign a, non a parent, sign a non-disclosure agreement... Mm -hmm to say, right, we will tell you mm. that we are teaching your eight-year-old child about some really fruity sexual stuff, mm. but you can't tell anyone about it. Yeah. How big a problem actually is this, though? Are we dealing in worst-case scenario here? Is this a problem? You know, is it real? It is. Well, we, we have anecdotal evidence from parents across the country who tell us exactly what's going on. One particular member of our staff showed me material that's being exposed to her children. And it's explicit. It's graphic. And this is before we even get to the gender ideological stuff, which we know from June, where there was a, just a panoply of cases. In fact, I was here mm. talking with you about it, mm. um, about these cases, about furries, about gender ideology. We know that's already happening. So this is clearly a problem. The, the thing is, we don't know the extent of it. And that's why I say what we really should have is a public inquiry as to how this has been allowed to happen in the first place and what the extent of it is. Why do you think that there is a desire to teach children very graphic things that go beyond the kind of basic birds and the bees, mm. gender ideology, and then to cover that up? I mean, yeah, if I'd, as a parent, said to, say, my child's history teacher, can you show me what's on the curriculum? There wouldn't be any problem there no. because there's nothing to hide about the mm. Tudors, really. Mm. But, but it implies here that there is something to hide about what they're teaching kids. Yeah. I think they know that parents are going to have a problem with this, but I think they think that they know better. Because there's a certain, again, ideological capture of institutions, particularly in the teaching profession, where they said, no, no, we need to educate children into this particular way of thinking, which accepts uh, you know, gender identity and gender ideology. Uh, but parents, they think, aren't enlightened enough to accept that. And that, I think, is the real problem here, that they're thinking of themselves as better and more important than parents. No, parents are central. So that would be the argument against it, which is that your parents might be incredibly bigoted 
And as well, let's be honest, in certain communities, you know, you might suffer some kind of honour-based violence or something at home mm -hmm. if you are a member of the LGBTQ plus mm -hmm. community or even if you just engage in basic sexual activity. Mm -hmm. So do schools not have a duty to guard against that? Oh, no, absolutely do. It's called safeguarding. And we already have the principles in place. I'm the chair of the Board of Governors of a nursery school, so I know very well the not safeguarding the measures. There, are they? Certainly not, oh. not. Thank heaven that's not no. come up yet. But nonetheless, the safeguarding's there. I'm safeguarding for myself. So I know that this is already there, but this is a part of safeguarding, that we should not be exposing children, underage children, below the age of consent to graphic materials and gender ideology. That surely itself is a safeguarding uh, you know, measure. Right. And therefore, if the schools are doing it, they are portraying their own principles in terms of safeguarding. OK, all, all right. Do you think you're going to end up seeing a rise in at homeschooling? I'd like to think so. I think we should be supporting homeschooling very much. Uh, I think that the more that parents are equipped themselves to be the primary educators of their children, the better off we are. And of course, there need to be, again, safeguarding measures, there need, need to be standards, but there has to be, I think, the freedom of parents to be that primary educators. Yeah, I think we're going to see a massive shift in stigma, mm. actually. I don't think there necessarily should have been a stigma to begin with. I think Anything that is unusual obviously attracts attention and mm. it is much more usual for people to send children to school yeah. right, in this country. That's the tradition that we yeah. have. I can't help but wonder when you look at the amount of strike days and you look at the uh, alleged ideology that you see in schools at the moment and then mm. potentially the uh, gender and, and sex education side of things yeah. as well, whether or not homeschooling really is going to become... Uh, an increasingly popular thing. But look, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. And uh, always a pleasure to uh, speak to you. That is Peter Williams there. He's the director of the Family Education Trust.